All right, so one of my recent videos I posted with the S10 wiring for a small block in a nutshell. I've been getting quite a few questions on that, so I'm gonna go outside and uh, just try to clarify some of these things. Otherwise, I've been inside, I've been painting my cupboards and whatnot, because it's been below 20 degrees and there. It's just, it's cold out there, and I don't wanna be laying around on the concrete when it's this cold. So let's get out there. All right, so I've been reading your comments and I do appreciate you guys reaching out to me, asking me questions, and I hope I help some of you along the way. But I'm making this video since I have the motor and transmission out. It'll be a little bit easier for me to navigate around and kind of show you how I'm going about wiring up my 1987 S10 for my 1968 327 with an HEI distributor, my 1992 NV3500 five-speed trans. So I'm going to start off with the computer. Since it was fuel injected, that pretty much controlled your whole fuel injection. So it would pick up your timing and maybe not even your timing. It would pick up your RPM, your O2 sensor, map sensor, and send signal to your injectors, when to pulse, and all that stuff. And since I'm going carbureted, you can just get, I just got rid of all of that stuff. Because all of your main power and everything comes through the driver's side block. And pretty much I put some power to it. And I started pulling some fuses and everything else. Everything that was related to the computer in the fuse block. I pulled. And then I went through it with the test light and made sure there was no power going to any of those wires. So that way there is no possibility of an arc. Which could cause an engine fire. And if I were to just take that out, it would just be a really big hole there. And I really, I really just think that that's going to be out of the way enough where people aren't going to notice if you're going to try making this some sort of show rig. But I'm here to have some fun. So pretty much I'll come over here to the driver's side main block. And you're going to see all these wires cut. And like I was saying, my gauge cluster is real basic. And all these were right to the sensors for everything, all the lights. If you got a gauge cluster that has pretty much all the information you need where it's a me mechanical you know, needle that goes up and down for oil pressure and coolant temp and voltage, you might want to keep that. And if you do, you're going to want to keep your wires related to that along with your sensors. So when you pull your factory motor out, you know, you see your coolant sensor, you know, pull the plug off that, pull the sensor out, plug it back in, set it off to the side, mark it. You're going to want to put that back in with whatever motor you swap in because it has the same resistance reading and ohm reading that that dashboard needs. Otherwise, you try putting in, you know, just any standard oil pressure gauge or coolant temp sensor and it might be a different resistance reading and it could throw your gauge way off and... It's just kind of a headache. So make sure you keep your sensors with your wires for whichever gauge cluster you have if that's the one you want to keep. But that is why I cut all mine up and then I shrink tubed them so that way they don't arc out or anything and I can always go back and re-tap into them for power wires to power up a relay for like let's say electric fans. But from there you have two main thick red lines. One's gonna be solid red, one's gonna be red and white. And for me, they're tied together and went right to the alternator. And if you see one of these has a third line that comes off of it, and I'm gonna be running that right on up to this factory distribution block up here. I think that's where I cut that wire from. Right now I just cut it so I can put it on a positive of a battery and then ground out the battery to the chassis. That way I can figure out my wires a little bit easier and going from there. So with that being plugged in up here, I'm gonna run a second wire coming off of this post down to the positive side of the starter along with the main wire that goes up to the battery. So that will charge the system along with give power to everything else inside the truck. And with the one wire going down to the positive of the starter, 
it will give power through the rest of the entire system so that way if the key is off and even out of the whole ignition system you open the door dome light can come on you can still hit your headlight switch or pull your headlight switch whichever style you got for first gen and your headlights can come on taillights can come on you can still listen to the radio all that stuff then also from there you're going to find this really light red wire almost pink and that's just a standard key on power source so i have that going straight to my distributor since i'm running a hei setup i only got the one wire so that makes it real simple and then you're also going to have a purple wire and it's going to be decently thick and this is your crank power so as soon as you turn that key to the crank this is going to go right to right down on the starter solenoid and that's what's going to make it start for you and that's pretty much it for the wiring in a nutshell i mean your heater box and heater wires for everything that all goes to the fuse box runs through a fuse to your switch your windshield wiper motor that all runs down to the fuse box has its own fuse goes to your you know combination switch your headlight and turn signal harness for the front that all has a fuse and runs through everything so with cutting all those wires you don't have to worry but if you are kind of concerned with that i do recommend just putting power through the system having the key on seeing if you have any power wires coming through there you can pull fuses to figure out which wire controls what and go from there but this is kind of my little breakdown that i got there as far as my fuel level you know i got these two wires that run down along the body here that's that but i'm going to a bigger tank with a different style pickup tube in it so that's going to require a different resistance reading requiring a different gauge so that's kind of where i'm sitting on this now and uh pretty much we're just going to keep going on it it's cold it's i think it's 12 degrees outside right now it's supposed to be colder tomorrow and colder come the weekend but i'm just pretty much gathering parts right now so that when springtime comes i can have everything in stock on hand where i can just start pounding this thing out and it'll actually come together really quick so the entire wiring harness i should probably be able to get that done in about a day and have it look all nice and neat and loomed up then i got front brakes back brakes axle seals bearings you know Everything as far as brakes is going to be absolutely brand new. Sway bar links going to be brand new. Tie rod ends new. Pretty much going to go through this whole thing. Top to bottom, front to back. Otherwise, that's pretty much a wiring part 1.5 in a nutshell. I hope this kind of helps somebody. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Um, other, in other big news, I figured out how I'm going to do my exhaust. I got... Two two and a half inch flow FX's. I think they're flow masters. Don't quote me on that, but they're flow FX. I'm gonna round them and have a crossover right behind the transmission and pretty much kick out on the passenger side in front of the back tire. Somehow I'm not sure if I'm gonna angle it down under the frame or go out through the box. I don't know. I had those for the Firebird, but I got a different exhaust style for the Firebird. That's exciting. I'll show that to you real quick. And we're calling it a day here. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.